Good morning, Saul. Let's get some breakfast. I'm at the Four Points Sheridan. Love staying here because usually the rooms are fairly inexpensive and the breakfast buffet, convenience, a lot of selection. Overall, pretty darn good. And before chowing down, a big thank you and shout out to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video and continuing to support this channel. I've been talking about Surfshark VPN for several years now. It's still something I use every single day, especially if you're getting out more, you're traveling more, you're connected to all sorts of different Wi-Fi hotspots. And these are really not that secure and great opportunity for people to have access to your personal information. I'm sure we all been through this whenever you're Googling something or sometimes even just literally talking to your friends about something. And then whatever you've been talking about or searching for, ask for that or something related to that start popping up everywhere. That's people getting access to your personal information. And what a VPN is, it's a virtual private network. And what Surfshark VPN does is that it encrypts and secures your personal information before it goes over the internet. So people who you don't want having access to your private info, they won't have access to it. Also, Surfshark has something called Surfshark Alerts. So when someone's trying to gain access to something like your email, you're gonna get notified right away. Also on the entertainment side, if you ever wanna check out what Netflix catalog looks like in other countries, you can actually trick Netflix into thinking that you're in a different country. You can gain access to that particular country's movies and TV shows. In general, it's just a great tool to have to protect your private information. Like I said, I've been talking about it for several years, still use it every single day. So if you wanna give it a try, go to my link down below. Use my promo code Mikey Chen. You'll get 83% off your order and three additional months for free. There's a cereal area with nuts and fruit, juice section, tea, coffee, soups in the morning. This morning there's Polak and beef seaweed soup, a small little bunchan bar, kimchi stew, beef and vegetable, rice, kanji, bagogi. There's fried rice, salmon and clam sauce, roasted chicken, traditional breakfast food right here, bacon, tomatoes, mushroom, sausage. It's also cheese, salads, cold cuts, smoked salmon. All right, I think I got everything I wanted. First off, this kimchi stew is awesome. I love kimchi stew for breakfast. I love it as my first bite of food because it's so spicy and vinegary. Mm. It's super, in Chinese, we call it kai wei, which means you're getting your appetite going. And I love how they use giant pieces of fatty pork in this stew. So everybody is so amazingly tender. And this buffet is like a pretty good balance of uh, Western food and also Asian food, rice noodles. Mm. Rice noodles, a spicy broth with a little bit of mushrooms and fried tofu. Add a bit of sriracha in here. One of my favorite things to get here. Mm. Also, I don't want this to kind of die on me. This buffet has uh, french fries for breakfast. So usually what I do, order a uh, runny egg and just dip 
the fries in the in the yolk. Some people are not big into eggs with ketchup. I love it. I got French fries dipped in egg yolk. It's not a traditional breakfast food, but I hate traditional breakfast food. Keeping things fun and interesting. That's what breakfast is all about. Also, smoked salmon. A little bit of horseradish. And then pop a cherry tomato in there. There's also a big pot of bulgogi, stir fried mushrooms. Also, dipping the bacon in a little yolk. Mm. Mm. Forgot one thing. It's also the session with bread, freshly made croissants. Croissants here are so good. Mm. Chase that with some cold cuts. There's some kimchi too. Mm. I love breakfast buffets in Asia. If you want traditional Western breakfast soup, they had. If you want local cuisine, they had that too. Honestly, eating them together, best way to have breakfast. Also, pastries. Every single breakfast buffet I've been to in South Korea, all pastries freshly made. Mm. All right, I'm gonna finish breakfast, but uh, since being back here, I haven't had a barbecue yet. We gotta take care of that. Restaurants hours are still kind of weird. So a lot of places that says they're open are not actually open. That would have been a really cool place. There's a secret dining room place. Gotta come back to that. Pizza never sleeps. Oh, that's true. That's the biggest door I've ever seen in my life. Look how big this door is. So got a half and half pizza. Try to get the large and then uh, they told me it's way too much for us. It's gonna be half and half. Half never sleep beef and half double pepperoni. So this is the never sleep beef and the double pepperoni. Never sleep beef is pretty much just bagogi with onions and jalapenos. Honestly, I feel a little bit psyched out from this. The crust is really, really light. Wow, that's really light crust. And very, very thin. Almost, ooh, very soggy. Kind of feel psyched out by this because I don't feel like the regular is all that big. Could have definitely done a large. Hmm. Give you different dipping sauces for the crust. Sour cream and dill. Spicy cheese. And just pure hot sauce. I think this pizza is okay. The bottom is a little too soggy. I like the end crust. It's very airy light. And they definitely give you a lot of meat on this. There's not much chew to the bottom of this crust. This beef one's way better than pepperoni. I think the crust, it's just okay, but the topping is delicious here. You get the crunch from the water chestnut, some heat from the jalapenos, a little sweetness and crunch from the onions. This flavor profile is awesome. Hmm. I never thought water chestnut would work on pizza. I never heard of it before. Oh, it's working. It's working really well. Korea has always been the land of super unique pizzas, and this is no exception. But this is awesome. But look how loaded it is. All that spicy jalapeno, you know what? Some kimchi on this as well. Just go ahead and dump some of this delicious dill sauce on top. Put the pepperoni to, to some better use. 
Mm. Oh, it's so good. This peaches has got so many different things to kind of keep your taste buds engaged. Keeps everything interesting. It's like a full-on non-stop action movie in your mouth. There's always something going on, especially if you incorporate the kimchi, you incorporate the dipping sauce, maybe some of the other toppings. Mainly just came here because all the other places I've been walking to has been closed. After taking a bite of that pepperoni, I thought I just made a huge mistake. I thought the food gods finally let me down. Mm, this beef pizza absolutely brought it. South Korea is just filled with different cafes, dessert shops. Anywhere you go, you're gonna find some good cafes. This place, I just saw the pictures of some of the dessert items they have. Check it out. So there's waffle, cheese waffles. Looks like apple danishes. But this is what I think they're known for right here. The croffins. You've never seen it before. This is a cruffin. It's basically a croissant muffin baby. Despite the size, it's extremely light. And this is the shooting star one. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is so flaky. It's stuffed with this blue cream with a cherry on top. And the insides, you can see, it's shaped like a muffin, but inside it's all croissant. Mm. This is so awesome. I think Crofton started in the US. I never had a chance to try it. It basically tastes like a thicker, bigger croissant with tons of flake. I mean, do not ever expect this thing to be on time or pay its rent or do its homework. This is just all sorts of flakiness. But it tastes absolutely magical. Whoa, just realized the spoon is the shape of a heart. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh my gosh. This spoon is so appropriate because each scoop is tastes like it's bringing love straight to my mouth. That is just pure, velvety, silky softness. Take a little bit of the croissant, eat it with it. A little texture contrast, but this pudding is just magical. Mmm. Oh, the whipped cream is so good too. They make the whipped cream here. They sell the whipped cream on its own. This is such a good dessert place. This is what I do in South Korea. I just walk around a random neighborhood and then one thing will lead you to another. That's why I love this country so much. Taking a little break before dinner time. So in South Korea, a lot of restaurants, they open from about 11 to maybe 2.30, then everything closes down and things reopen up again, usually around five or 5.30 or six. Cafe culture is such a big deal in this country. That's probably one of the biggest differences between here and Japan. Japan, it's really hard to find a cafe that's gonna let you just sit there and work on your laptop for hours on end. Cafes in South Korea encourages it. You would actually get discounts on food and drinks for staying longer. That's a delicious little matcha bear. Rou chuan. Lamb skewers, qin tiao rou chuan. Tendons, mala. Spicy and nummy. What I love about places like this, always wood charcoal. Meat barbecue with this tastes so good. Such a big difference. These are so fun too. Line them up and just watch them rotate and cook and become all sorts of delicious. Probably not the best thing to do in the summer, but in the winter, when it's freezing outside, nice charcoal fire in front of you with meat cooking on it, doesn't get much better than that. I think these skewers already have cumin and chilies on there, but give it another roll in these spices, you're gonna go. Mm. Best meat for cooking these skewers, 100% lamb. And it's just so fatty and nice. And when it's cooked, put it on the top so it can still stay warm and toasty. Oh. I still remember back in China, this was my favorite street food. I could really never afford it. So I promised myself one day when I could, I'm gonna get as many of these skewers as I can. So even to this day, I love places like this. 
Chase it with some pickled radish and fried peanuts. Basically, whenever I'm eating this, pretty much reliving a childhood dream. All right, back again to try this place out. 890 Secret Dining Room. This is so fun. So the door is a bookshelf and uh, the pictures of the menu just caught my eye. Also, last meal of the day, by the way. Bone rip steak, lobster rolls pasta, truffle pasta, uni pasta. Oh my goodness. All right, there's a lot of good stuff here. Look at a few things. Look at this. This is the uni pasta. Cracked pepper on top, little bits of parsley, butter, cheese. This looks delightful. And if you never had pasta in Korea, it's amazing. Like Italian food is so big in this country. They said to mix the pasta up and you're supposed to just mix the uni in there as well. Just break it up and mix that all up in there. Oh. Wow. This pasta is scary good. I need to kind of gather myself a little bit before I can explain what I'm tasting here. I mean, first of all, the pasta, perfectly cooked, perfectly al dente. The texture, the chew, everything about it, 100% on point. It's a butter sauce with some cheese, and I try to mix it in so that it touches all the pasta. So the pasta now is ingrained with that creamy, briny flavor from the uni. It's like the pasta is somehow cooked in the ocean in the best way possible. I mean, I dare you to take a bite out of this and not just absolutely fall in love with it. I got a couple more dishes to try, but what a first impression this is. This second dish, also one of their most popular pasta dishes, lobster pasta, look at this. Half of a lobster, including a ginormous claw, and it's a rose pasta, so vodka sauce pasta. First of all, the lobster is beautiful. Like every time I have pasta in South Korea, it's just so good. And at this point, the lobster is great looking. I'm just so excited for the noodles. I love Korean food. I love coming to Korea to eat Korean food, but I've said this last time, come here and go to an Italian restaurant or a place like this. The roll sauce, it's creamy, slightly sweet, very smoky. Again, that pasta is just absolutely perfect. It's just absolute perfection. And let me show you what just showed up in front of me. Again, I saw a picture of this and I was like, oh yeah, I gotta come here and try this place. This is your beef rib and you got the whole rib right there. Also, it's sliced up so beautifully on a sizzling skillet. Here, they put soybean paste over brown rice. Some veg here, little wasabi and seeded mustard. Unbelievable. Look how marbled each piece is. And it's cooked absolutely perfect. So you can eat it with a little wasabi. They also give you a little pepper sauce to dip it in if you feel like it needs more flavor. Mm. Wow. 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 Everything on this plate. Let me just kind of talk about it after I take another bite of this beef. Let me try this in the, in the pepper sauce. That beef just completely renders on your tongue. Also, this soybean paste over this brown rice. I'm not a big fan of brown rice, but anything touching that paste, I will 100% eat. Put that on broccoli. Broccoli might just become my favorite fruit. It's so good. You taste that great fermented flavor, a little spice. Very earthy, They're so rich and deep. The vegetable they have here, I forgot what they told me, like what it was. It's just unbelievably crunchy, it's pickled as well. And the pieces of beef, it's charred, so you get that nice smoky flavor. And I can't wait to just gnaw on this bone right here. This restaurant is absolutely outrageously good. 
Mm. It is definitely the highlight of today. Every single bite just continuously blows my mind. These are the Dalgona crackers on the Squid Game uh, TV series. Little petals, they said it melted some sugar on the side. Mm. A little bitterness from the caramelized sugar. Creaminess from the ice cream. Nice crunch from the Dalgona. Mm. This is an awesome place. I mean, the atmosphere is fun. I'm sitting here just kind of eating, looking over the streets of Ghana. Food is absolutely mind blowing. 100% tried the lobster pasta. Uni pasta is delicious as well. I'm sure all their pastas are good. The steak is delicious. And the people here are just so nice. And that concludes an amazing food day here in Seoul. And as always, I'll place I went to listen down below for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Till we eat again. See you later.